Today, we're gonna look at some live aboard sailboats that are small, easily affordable, and most importantly, available, like Taylor Swift when she breaks up with this joker. Boats like this one, or this one, or this one. I do a lot of consulting with people who want 40 something footers for a hundred and something grand, but some of you out there don't need all that bougie queen bed sugar scoop madness. Some people are a simpler kind. Some people don't want to wait until they're in their golden years to finally get out and do the thing. Some of you just want to go small, go simple, and go now. We're going to look at five boats right now and while we do that we're going to cover a couple of things to watch out for things you don't want on your little floating home so let's get to our five contenders and any of these can be had for less than 10 grand the ones i picked to show you in this video just had the best pictures but trust there are some super common boats here and you can get them cheap if you're willing to sniff around a little bit First up, we can't talk about small sailboats without Catalina, and the Catalina 25 hits the spot for a lot of people. We're talking a cheap, saleable bachelor or bachelorette pad here that gives you enough room to stand up, somewhere to comfortably eat your dinner, and two different places that you might want to sleep. We get a V-berth that's kind of usable for a single person or super cozy couple, but also a quarter berth at the back in a 25-footer. It's weird. For me, this quarter berth is likely to just be storage and I'll sleep up in the front, thank you very much. And I highlight the Catalina 25 not just because it's genuinely a good boat, which it is. Not because they made damn near 6,000 of them, which they did, but because it has a bathroom. Not many 25 footers give you a room to put the toilet, albeit this boat is that little room in between the, the space between the main salon and the V-berth, but nonetheless, with a curtain and a door arrangement, you could genuinely have a bathroom on this boat. Port side toilet, starboard side sink. Which brings me to my first point. Make sure the boat you live on has a dedicated place for the toilet like the Catalina 25 does. You see van lifers all the time trying to hide the toilet under some cabinetry or under the bed and it sort of slides out and they have to go all transformers on their vans whenever they have to pee. And that doesn't work on sailboats. The toilet needs a dedicated location for you to do your business and this 25 footer gives you that. Okay, next boat. That 25 was good, but check out this 28. This is a cow and believe it or not, Cows were made in California. They made them up until 1989, and these boats are known for good quality, but more than that, cows are usually fast. You'll see cows on the podium in most club races, and for good reason. This one is in great shape, and it comes with some newer blue stuff on it, like a nice Dodger and covers for the wheel and the mainsail. That's why they want 16 grand for this thing. But with your eyes open, you can find a Cal 28 for less than 10, fairly easily, maybe without all that nice blue stuff on it. This boat is nice, roller furling, inboard jib tracks. She should be a sailor's sailboat, as Cal tends to do. We get tons of opening hatches and self-tailing winches, but taking a look inside is actually a very livable place. We get a flip-up table between the two settees, a larger than average quarter berth in the back, and a bathroom that normal-sized humans can actually fit in. Not bad for a 28-footer. The galley they give us in this boat is about the same as the one in my 35-footer, which hurts my soul a little bit. And if you swap out this sink for one that actually fits plates in it, you can really cook meals in this space. And what this boat brings up for me is the engine. This 28-footer is fitted with a Westerbeek diesel. And say what you want about Westerbeeks. Usually people say, I've never met a happy Westerbeek owner. At least it's not an Atomic 4. Most of these cheap small sailboats were powered with the time-honored Atomic 4 gasoline engine, and that's fine most of the time if you're just using the boat recreationally as a lake boat, but food for thought. While you can keep an Atomic 4 running with a carb kit, a hammer, and some WD-40, 
they smell all the time they smell and that smell is gasoline which also explodes small boat tip number two then if you can try to get a little diesel engine in your small boat not only are they much more fuel efficient when we're talking about gas engines from the 70s and 80s that were designed in the 60s but the gas pollutes the air and then it becomes explosive in your tiny home and the only thing explosive in the home should be the money you're saving not paying rent anymore am i right boat number three and these hold a special place in my heart because last summer we raced one of these and made first place in our club series on the great lakes this is a pearson 28 and we don't have to be specific on pearson the one we raced was a 30 but anything from 26 to 30 from pearson is awesome these are known for heavy glass work very good layup good construction and good sailing a pearson will never really steer you wrong and this happens to be a 28 which is fine but i might try to find a 30 but we get a roller furling lots of hatches we even get some door aids to keep the air flowing we get coach top winches and even wheel steering i've had tiller boats and while they are better for racing this boat brings up another point I'd like to make. While living on a sailboat, the wheel steering has its advantages. It might take up a little more room in the cockpit, but it means when you're sailing along all by yourself and you find that you have to pee or run inside for a snack or just want to rest your arms for a minute, you can lock the wheel very easily and walk away. A tiller boat isn't that simple. If you let go of the tiller for even a second, the boat will deviate from its course. If it's blowing really good, the boat might round up entirely or bear off and put its ear in the water. Tillers are great for performance sailing because you can feel the rudder blade, but for a liveaboard sailboat and for cruising, the wheel is so, so much easier to live with. Try doing a 100 mile day on a tiller boat. I have, and it sucks. I love this Pearson because the inside is a bit different than the traditional. It's open and airy and fairly large because they connected the main cabin in the V-berth. I wonder how I might lay out this boat if I lived on it. What would that V-berth become? Maybe just storage? I don't know. I love the open concept here though. And you might be thinking, where's the bathroom? It's at the back. We get two doors behind the big galley and the charting area, which is kind of huge. Behind door number one, we get a bathroom. And behind door number two reveals a little bedroom. A bedroom on a 28-footer. This is wild. You could have two people living on this boat if you wanted to, one in the V-berth and one in the back room. It's awesome. And guess what else Pearson gave us with this little gem? A Yanmar, the diesel you want if you're going to have one. This is a 2G, and these are awesome little engines. This is an awesome little boat, and honestly, it would be hard to top this thing if you wanted to go small, go simple, and go now. Or, apparently, if you left no room for mediocrity, because I guess neither does Pearson. The mission here at Lady K Sailing has always been to get more people sailing more easily and a big shout out to all the patrons who make these videos possible i really couldn't do it without you guys these are the folks who give a couple of bucks an episode to get more people sailing if you'd like to help out please consider becoming a patron here's a boat that you can find anywhere and everywhere an aloha 28 or 8.5 in the queen's math this is an older boat and it shows so you better like dark teak and mahogany interiors for these boats we get a galley across the back with these boats so no quarter berth but if we're just going to use the quarter berth for storage anyway it might as well just be dedicated to the lazarettes in the cockpit we get more room inside that way this is another boat that gives us a dedicated bathroom just before the v-berth that you can close off for privacy if you're sleeping up there these aloha boats are heavy they're handsome they're well made and best of all incredibly commonplace you can find them on both coasts of north america and i've seen them so cheap that they're almost giving them away because they're a bit older this one is 14 grand but seriously it's a 1982 you can find one of these for seven look around a little bit but this boat has something i consider absolutely necessary if we're going to be solo sailing and if you're living on a boat this small, solo sailing is likely your plan. This boat gives us a roller furling up front. I've sailed and owned boats without a roller furling. And when we race, we wouldn't dare run a furling. 
but living on a boat and solo sailing for traveling purposes is different than racing. You need to be able to reduce sail in a hurry to furl in a blow when things get going rough or when you want to go inside to cook or need to settle the boat down a little bit. And these little boats aren't that heavy, so you really do feel all the wind gusts and the healing. Being able to roll in a little bit of sail instead of going up on deck, wrestling down the big number one jib, hanking on the number two or three instead, and hoisting it all while not getting any of the sails wet just to go make a cup of coffee is ridiculous. Not to mention, it can be unsafe. When the weather kicks up hard and suddenly, which it does, a furling boat means you can just pull a line to reduce sail, going up on deck to wrestle a big jib down when the weather pipes up while you're sailing alone is just dangerous and, thanks to furlings, unnecessary. Find a boat with a furling. Okay, the last boat for today, and yes, maybe I saved the best for last. The quintessential small, cheap sailboat on the market right now. The most readily available, the most easy to live on and good sailing. You had to know this was coming. The Kia Forte of 30 footers, the Catalina 30. These are like a global phenomenon. They're everywhere. They're cheap. They're easy to solo sail. They're big enough to live on. Honestly, this boat makes so much sense for this video that I'm almost bored talking about it. If you want a 30 footer to live on for less than 10 grand, this should be at the top of your list. And yes, they want 34 for this one, but it's really, really nice. You can get one of these that needs work for less than 10. I'm not even going to go on and on about this boat's good points because it's just self-evident. Instead, I'm going to tell you what to watch out for when you go look at one of these. First, this is an Atomic 4 boat, that old gasoline engine that we wanted to avoid. If not just for the fumes, then just for the work involved in keeping it running. These Catalinas also, though, came with the option of a diesel, but a really good find would be one of these that's been repowered with a Beta Marine. That would be perfect. This is also one of the boats that gave us the term Catalina Smile. In the factory, they put a piece of plywood between the hull and the keel when they bolted this boat together, and if water got to that plywood, the keel starts to get a little loose and makes the keel to hull joint show up more and more. Most people just tighten the keel bolts, re-glass the keel to hull joint, and carry on. But that is a problem you need to watch for. Excessive play in the keel could be a problem you don't want to deal with on a $10,000 boat. In a boat that there are likely 10 of within driving distance of the one you're looking at. So if it has that problem, just go find another one. Another thing to look at on this boat, and really all boats of this age, is soft decks. As you scroll through the pictures of any of these boats, I want you as an exercise to try to count the screw holes you see in the deck, including the hatch holes, any and all holes drilled into this deck. If any one of them leaks, you're going to have soft spots in the deck. The last thing you ever want to do is recore a deck. So whichever boat that you try to find, make sure the deck is reasonably good. For less than 10 grand, it won't be perfect. If it's just minor soft spots though, it'll do just fine. You can fix them or just re-bed the leaky screws and fasteners so it never gets any worse. These are cheap boats, not perfect boats. If you were spending 10 grand or less, what would you buy to live on? Leave a comment below and let's help people pick out a boat that will get them out there sailing. I won't see you guys until next week, so I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays, and I hope someone buys you boat parts or something boaty. I love you guys. We'll see you next week. Mm -hmm.